Chapter 6 Confessions You and Eleanor stand facing each other across the parlor, the rest of the Waverleys looking on in awe. Lori, are you sure you want to do this? You've never talked much about your brother's death before. That's exactly the problem. My secrets kept him stranded, unable to pass on. Lori, you never told us you had a brother. What happened to him? And what exactly do you mean by unable to pass on? Well, Eleanor, should I tell them? Eleanor hangs her head, her eyes downcast. Share your secret, Lori. I'll... I'll try to do the same. Thank you, Eleanor. You take a deep breath, fighting back the tears forming in your eyes. A year ago, my brother was home from college for the holidays. He went to a party with some friends, but when he drove back that night, he... he went off the road. Missed the turn and shot straight off the lip of the ravine. That's awful. I'm sorry, Laurie. Thank you, Thomas. But it gets worse. My parents and I were called out to identify the body. I've never cried so hard in my life. I was still crying when I got home and found his... his letter. You never mentioned a letter before. I know. You move to the window and look out across the moonlit snow, the frost forming crystalline patterns on the glass. It wasn't an accident. When Jonathan left the house that day, he knew he wouldn't be coming home. My brother wanted to die. And I had no idea. I failed him. And even worse, I lied to cover it up. What do you mean? How did you cover it up? I... I destroyed the letter. I never told our parents, or his friends, or anyone. You turn around, your eyes finding Eleanor's. She looks back at you, her face stricken. Lori, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Neither did I. My brother's ghost called me a liar before, and I didn't want to admit it. But that's what I am. I've been lying to everyone in my life since the day he died. But that ends today. Jonathan, if you can hear this, I'm sorry. I told myself I was protecting your memory. But the truth is, I couldn't face telling our parents. You listen for any sign of your brother and hear nothing but silence. Hold on a second. When did it get this quiet? Just then, the door of the parlor explodes inwards, a roar of flame ripping through the room. <laughs> get back, all of you! Mrs. Waverly looms in a wreckage of the doorway, her eyes glowing with hatred, the wasted skin around her teeth pulled back in a sneer. Why have you shut me out again, Eleanor? Afraid to tell your siblings the truth? What is she talking about, Eleanor? Please, just tell us! Before Eleanor can reply, the ghost of Mrs. Waverly crosses the room in a streak of red-hot flame lunging for her daughter's throat. No! <gasps> Suddenly, a figure appears between Rose and Eleanor. <sighs> Jonathan! 
Jonathan grits his teeth. One hand clenched around Mrs. Waverly's outstretched arm, and he shifts his gaze onto you. Hello, sister. Oh my god. Jonathan, I'm so, so sorry. I should have known that you were... that you... You couldn't have known. Don't blame yourself. By telling my story, you've set me free. But before I go, maybe I can do one good thing after all. Release me, you pathetic creature! Jonathan winces as Rose claws at his face, leaving deep, dark gouges in his blistered skin. You won't keep me from my children! I can't hold on much longer, Lori. You have to end this now. Eleanor! It's time! You have to tell them! You have to tell them everything! I... I don't know if I can, Laurie. You can, okay? You can! Eleanor's lip trembles for a moment. Then a look of steely resolve comes over her face. Very well. She reaches up to the black band of fabric around her neck and undoes a clasp at the back letting it fall aside. No! Eleanor! What? What happened to you? I'm sorry, darling. But she did this. Our mother. Silence, you little... She... She murdered us. All of us. I'm so sorry I have to tell you like this. But she poisoned the three of you. And when I found out, she did this. So... So we're... Dead. Mrs. Waverly howls in pain as her body erupts in a column of flame Waves of heat rolling off her as she rages against Jonathan's grip. You stole so much from us, Mother. All because you were so afraid of everything. Rose screams as her bones turn to ash and begin to flake away, her ribcage collapsing inwards as the fire consumes her. I was protecting you! The world outside these walls is too dangerous! I couldn't risk losing you like I lost your father! You didn't lose him, you fool! He survived the war! He was the one who found us! <laughs> what? I... Before she can say another word, Mrs. Waverly falters and collapses to the ground, her flame finally gone out. William, forgive me. He's gone, Mother. And where you're going, you'll never see him again. The bones shatter into dust as they hit the floor. It's... it's finally over. Eleanor stumbles backward and falls onto the sofa behind her, gripping the arm for support. Her hands fumble at her throat as she reattaches the black band, a faraway look in her eyes. Eleanor, what are we? Are we ghosts? Eleanor pulls Simon onto her lap and kisses the top of his head. Yes, Simon, I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Eleanor looks up at Clarissa and Thomas. I know how angry with me you must be. I... I should have told you ages ago. I just couldn't bear to hurt you like that. Clarissa and Thomas cross the room to sit beside Eleanor. We understand, Eleanor. If I had been in your place... 
I can only imagine how difficult this has been for you. Eleanor's eyes fill with tears, and she pulls her siblings into a tight hug. Victor places his hand on your shoulder. I think you have family of your own to talk to, Laurie. You turn away from the Waverleys to see Jonathan watching, a strange look in his eye. Jonathan, thank you for saving them, for saving me. Jonathan nods slowly, seeming not to hear you. Jonathan? Jonathan tears his eyes away from Eleanor and her siblings and faces you. I was just thinking back on how things used to be. After everything these kids went through, the fact that they still love and trust each other, it makes me ashamed. Jonathan, why didn't you tell me you were feeling so hopeless? I guess I didn't know how, and I had convinced myself that no one would have cared anyway. I would have. I... I know that now. Still, thanks to you, I'll finally be able to find peace. I wish you didn't have to go, but I'm glad I got a proper goodbye this time. Me too, Sis. Jonathan starts to fade away before your eyes, enveloped by a gentle white light. Goodbye, Jonathan. I love you. I love you too, Laurie. You turn back to the Waverleys, and Eleanor smiles sadly at you. Are you okay, Laurie? I... Yeah, I think so. You? I think so. <laughs> Let's step into the foyer for a moment. It seems we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, I would say so. I'll be right back, Victor. Sure thing. As you and Eleanor walk out to the foyer, Victor turns to the Waverly children. So, how's it going? So? So? It feels good to... To finally tell the truth, I feel like a huge weight's been taking off of me. As do I. I want to thank you, Lori, for everything you've done for us. If you hadn't come along, who knows how long I would have waited to tell my siblings the truth. So, you're not mad that I took your key while you were sleeping? I was wondering how you did that. No, I'm... I'm not mad. If you hadn't, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. But... I guess it does make me a little worried that your feelings weren't genuine. Eleanor... My feelings are... genuine. I didn't want to deceive you like that. But I only did it to help you. Because I care about you. So much. I was hoping you would say that. I feel the same way. Eleanor, I hope this isn't crossing a line, but... There's still so much I don't understand about... About what happened to you and your siblings. I... I don't like to think about it. But I'll answer one more question. There's just one thing I want to know. Why did you do it? Eleanor looks away, her expression pained. My 
my mother was not well, Lori. She was afraid of everything. After my father went off to war, her condition worsened drastically. She convinced herself that father would die in the fighting, never come home. And she stopped letting us outside for fear we would get hurt. I think... I think she thought she was guaranteeing our safety somehow, by making sure we could never leave her side. Eleanor, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have... <laughs> no, it's... it's all right. I can't blame you for wondering. But I'd rather call this over, once and for all. You and Eleanor return to the parlor to find the Waverly children interrogating Victor about the modern world. Have there been any significant advances in the field of entomology? Forget bugs! What's the most popular ten-penny romance? Uh, what? Victor shoots you and Eleanor a grateful look. Please rescue me. Children, leave this poor young man alone. So, what happens now, Eleanor? Is it time for us to go? I'm afraid so, Clarissa. But it's not so bad, is it? At least we'll be together. And maybe we'll see father. Exactly. There's nothing to be afraid of. Eleanor gathers his siblings around her and holds them close. Just close your eyes and let yourself fall away. I'm right here. Goodbye, Laurie. Thank you for... for everything. We'll miss you. Even Thomas. I suppose I'm a little sorry to say goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. I hope we see each other again someday. The Waverly children close their eyes, holding tight to Eleanor, and the room fills with a soft white light. You feel a tear roll down your cheek as the light grows brighter still until it's so bright you have to close your eyes. When you open your eyes, you and Victor are left alone in the room with Eleanor. I... I can't believe this is happening. Eleanor chokes back a sob, her eyes suddenly bright, and you cross the room to pull her into a hug. Hey, it's okay. I just... I wish it didn't have to be like this. We had our whole lives ahead of us. You pat Eleanor's back as she cries into your shoulder, then pull back to face her. You pull Eleanor closer and press your lips against hers, kissing her through her tears. Goodbye, Laurie. The room slowly fills with the same bright white light and you start to feel Eleanor's body growing warmer in your arms. You feel a strange floating sensation and open your eyes. Eleanor! You and Eleanor float above the parlor floor, surrounded by an intense light. Eleanor blinks at you, her eyes wide. Laurie, I feel... I feel different. Eleanor feels under her collar, and her eyes go wider still. My scar... it's gone. What does it mean? Eleanor suddenly gasps and presses your hand to her chest. What are you... Oh... 
You feel Eleanor's heart beating beneath your hand, and she smiles at you. How is this possible? I don't know, but isn't it amazing? I feel like, like I've been given the second chance, like there are two paths open to me. Do you think, do you think I should stay here, in your world? I think, I want you to stay. Are you sure? I'm sure. Eleanor holds you tighter still, and the light gently fades as the two of you drift back down to the floor together. Victor blinks as his eyes readjust to the change in lighting, and his mouth falls open. Wait, what the... what just happened? Turns out I'll be staying after all. Lori, I don't understand. How is this... Possible? No clue. But to be honest, I'm done asking questions. Works for me. So, now that you've got your whole life ahead of you, what do you want to do first? Honestly, I just want to get out of this house. Think you could fit one more in your car, Victor? I think I can make it work. You lead Eleanor outside to find the storm subsided and breathe a sigh of relief. Ready to go? Definitely. You open the door of Victor's car for Eleanor and she pauses to take a last look at Braidwood Manor before getting in. Not having second thoughts, are you? No, not exactly. Just wondering if I'll ever come back here. You reach down to take Eleanor's hand in yours. If you ever want to come back, I'll come with you. Thanks, Lori. But for now, I think I'm ready to say goodbye. A few days later, you and Eleanor walk across the Hartfeld campus, a gentle snow falling around you. Are you sure I look okay, Lori? These modern clothes feel so strange on me. Trust me, Eleanor. You look gorgeous. Eleanor smiles, her hand finding yours. Thank you, Lori. The bell over the door rings as you enter the campus coffee shop, and Victor grins at you from behind the counter. Hey, you two. What can I get for you? I'll have a hazelnut macchiato. Just tea, thank you. Coming right up. I would sit down to chat, but we're about to have the lunch rush in here, and Brandon would kill me if it flaked. No worries, I'm sure we can find some way to entertain ourselves. As you walk toward a booth at the back of the shop, you suddenly hear someone calling your name and turn around. I thought that was you, Lori! Why don't you come sit with us? Uh, okay. Is that alright with you, Eleanor? I don't mind. You and Eleanor join Caitlin and two of her friends at their table. Laurie's in my intro class. Laurie, this is Zach and Tyler. Hey. Hi. So, are you going to introduce us to your friend? I definitely haven't seen her around before. My name is Eleanor Waverly, and you are? Caitlin Liao! Are you an exchange student? Your accent! Oh, that. 
Yes, I'm originally from England. But I've lived here for, well, a long time. Oh, that explains it! So, Lori, Zack and I have a little bet going. Are you and Eleanor, like, together? Um... Yes, we are. Looks like someone owes me five bucks! Damn, I can't believe I got that wrong. Sorry about them, you two. They're always nosing into other people's love lives. You're one to talk. As I recall, you took a lot of interest in... As Zack and Tyler start bickering, Caitlin shoots you and Eleanor a commiserating look. Are they always like this? More or less, but you get used to it. We should all hang out more often. I feel like I never see you outside of class, Lori. Yeah, I've had a bit of a rough year. But I'm ready to, you know, come out of my shell, I guess. Awesome! We're having a party at our suit this weekend. Think you two could squeeze us into your schedule? What do you think, Eleanor? I think that sounds lovely.